In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what I believe it would take for these big, massive, online precious metal dealing websites to lower their premiums on silver, along with the importance of supporting small businesses such as the local coin shop. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and staying safe. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I'm gonna be talking about silver and also gold along with these massive online precious metal dealing storefronts with their marked up prices and what I believe we could do to combat the premiums. We're gonna get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you wanna get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today is Saturday, May 15th, 2021. It's nice and warm and sunny outside. It's 74 degrees. So I'm filming today's video outside. And I actually lied. It's not Saturday the 15th. For me, it's Friday the 14th. I'm filming the video a day early. I don't know where silver and gold are going to close at for the weekend, but as I'm recording the video, the spot price of silver is $27.40, which means it's up about 30 cents. And the spot price of gold is $1,842.60, which means it's up 16.10. The gold to silver ratio, as I'm recording the video, is currently in the 1 to 66 to 1 to 67 range. Head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. So today I wanted to talk about combating the premiums. The premiums, premiums, premiums. Everyone's talking about the premiums. Everyone's been talking about the premiums for over a year at this point. And I try my absolute hardest not to talk too much about the premiums because... What else can I say? Water's wet. We understand the premiums are astronomically high. We understand the premiums are out of control. But I wanted to talk about this today because I believe there's something that we can do, although it's not something we can do on our own. It's something that would have to be done on a large, massive scale. Now, before I can even get into that, I want to talk about why the premiums went up in the first place and why they stayed up. Two different reasons. They went up for one reason, they stayed up for another, at least in my opinion. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. I don't work for any of these online precious metal dealing websites. This is just my assumption. I believe it had a lot to do with business continuity. I think when everything crashed down, March of 2020, stock market came crashing down, silver nearly got chopped in half, gold came down by a couple hundred dollars, everything fell apart. I believe these online precious metal dealing websites cranked up the premiums to prevent themselves from losing currency. It's pretty simple. Business continuity, I completely understand. They probably got a whole mess of their inventory for 16, 17 bucks. Spot price was about 18 bucks at the time, right before the crash. Premiums were about $2 or so, give or take. But then after the crash, silver went all the way down to just below $12. So I completely understand why the premiums went up in the first place. Business continuity, you gotta do what you gotta do to stay afloat, I get it. However, I think they stayed up high for a completely different reason. Reason I say that is because spot price of silver, oh, it definitely went back to $18. It went right back to where it was before it fell down in the first place. So if the spot price was $18 and premiums were, let's just say, about $2 pre-crash, grand total of $20 out the door stack price, how come after the spot price fell from $18 and then went all the way back to $18, the four, five, six, seven dollar $7 premiums remained? I believe that was because we taught these online precious metal dealing websites that we're willing to pay these crazy high premiums. Of course, they did it for business continuity purposes, but they kept it up because all of a sudden it was like a newfound way of making profit. You were paying crazy high premiums. I was paying crazy high premiums. He was paying crazy high premiums. She was paying crazy high premiums. Everybody was paying these crazy high premiums. And a lot of people, 
especially the people who were just diving into silver for the first time, they were happily paying the crazy high premiums because they didn't know any other way. They weren't stacking before everything came crashing down. They weren't used to $2 over spot. When they got started, $5 over spot, sometimes more, was the norm. That's just what you do. Their very first piece of silver ever was picked up for several dollars over spot. Far more than what we were used to. A lot of us, maybe we didn't have a choice at the time. A lot of these new people, they just didn't know any better. And these online precious metal dealing websites, they learned that if we're willing to pay, they can charge whatever they want. They can even raise the premiums up even higher. And guess what? A lot of us would still be paying. And they know this. So I also wanted to talk about how much money, or should I say how much currency is involved with some of these massive precious metal dealing websites. Now, some of you might remember if you've been subscribed for a couple of months, three or four months back, I posted a video talking about how Amark Precious Metals acquired JM Bullion. Now, funny enough, maybe a year, year and a half ago, potentially, maybe a little bit longer, JM Bullion acquired Provident Metals. So Provident was taken by JM, and then JM was taken by Amark, and I couldn't help but wonder, okay, who's going to take over Amark? Are they just going to keep eating each other up like this? Is it going to get to the point where all of these massive online precious metal dealing websites are all under the same umbrella, and there's no competition? Because that would not be a good thing from a customer's perspective. That would be horrible for us. For me, for you, for him, for her, that would be a catastrophe. It'd be great for them. Loads of profit. Horrible for us. Terrible for us. But regardless, Amark was setting up to pay $138.3 million for the remaining 79.5% of JM Bullion that they didn't already own. And if we were to take a look at JM Bullion's 2020 financial statements, we can see that their net sales for last year was $1.49 billion. Their gross profit was $78.9 million, and and their pre-tax income was $62.2 million. The reason I share these numbers, the reason I share these crazy high, unfathomable amount of dollar bills is to showcase and highlight to each and every one of you that these little websites that we go on from our phone, quick and easy, oh, boom, pull up this little website, order some silver eagle, some maple, some generic rounds, maybe some kilo bars, maybe a little piece of gold, maybe some copper, maybe some of this, maybe some of that. These are not little websites. These are not small businesses. These are massive corporations with a global customer base. They ship worldwide and they rake in tens of millions, hundreds of millions, sometimes billions of dollars in revenue. These are not small businesses. And if you or if I were to take my business elsewhere, they wouldn't care. And you, you want to know why they wouldn't care? It's because they wouldn't even notice. Me taking my dollars away from them would not even scratch the surface because they know they have over a million people placing orders year round. They know that over a million people are gladly paying these crazy high premiums. Maybe they're not gladly paying the premiums, but they're paying the premiums whether they're happy about it or not. And these online precious metal dealing websites, they know this. Now, moving away from the massive corporations, let's quickly talk about the small businesses, the local coin shop in your area. Guess what that is? That is probably a mom and pop shop. That is probably a small family owned business. That is not a company. That is not a corporation. They probably have a little teeny tiny spot that they rent in order to buy and sell coins, rounds, and bars, potentially antiques or silverware or whatever it is that they're doing. It's a very small business. And now more than ever, small businesses need our help. We saw last year in 2020, 
all of the small businesses, not just the coin shops, but small businesses in general, got swept under the rug. They got tossed aside. And who made a majority of the money last year? Massive corporations, huge, giant companies. They made more money than ever last year. And the small businesses that were shut down last year and didn't have any say in the matter, guess what, unfortunately? A solid portion of them will never return. They're gone. They're already done. They've closed their doors permanently because they could not afford to reopen. This is what happened. And this is why I personally believe it's crucial, it's vital, it's mandatory to support small businesses. And guess what? Your local coin shop is a small business. And it's gotten to the point for me, now I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not calling for a boycott by any means. That is absolutely not what I'm doing. And when I say this, I'm not even exclusively talking about coin shops. I'm talking about small businesses in general, but I'm also talking about coin shops. It's gotten to the point for me. Actually, it's been to this point for a very long time. I would rather pay a little bit more to shop with a small business than pay a little bit less and shop with a massive corporation. That's how it's been for me. And that's something that I'm a big believer in. That's something that I've been pushing for a very long time. Supporting small businesses is way more important than you may realize. In my opinion, I think small businesses are the backbone of the entire economy. That's just my opinion. And I know how important it is to support small businesses. Now, away from all of that, what can we do to combat the premiums? Here's something that, in theory, could be done. Realistically speaking, I don't believe it would ever happen because I don't think enough people would be on board to make it happen. But I believe the only way that these massive online precious metal dealing websites would even consider dropping their premiums is if they were to see and experience a dramatic reduction in orders being placed by their customers. That's what I believe. That's how I truly think we can combat the premiums. Again, I'm not calling for a boycott. I would not tell you to not place an order with anyone. I'm not going to tell you to buy. I'm not going to tell you not to buy. I'm not going to tell you to do anything. I'm just thinking out loud over here, and I'm not telling you who to support or what to support or anything like that, but... I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know. What do you think it would take for us to see the premiums dropping on the precious metals? And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms. Not on YouTube's terms. My terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I'm posting exclusive VIP-only adventure vlogs. I also do giveaways discounts, personalized promo codes, shout-outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites, and of course you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Bunch of brand new videos over there. One about ordering silver and gold online. One about teaching your kids about silver and gold. One about the tech stock sell-off we've been seeing. One about recovery stocks. One about the credit card crackdown and a bunch of others. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 3,000 subscribers. We just hit 2,000 and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs along with a ton of other products, t-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin' t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, 
and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin, which by the way is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you, it comes out of my pocket, not yours. And of course, last but not least, the brand new DYDSS Karen Free Zone t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug. My name is not Karen. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance, it's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything that I shared in today's video? Do you believe that the online massive precious metal dealing websites would lower their premiums if they saw that their customers, and I'm not just talking about three, four, five, six, ten, twenty, fifty 10, 20, 50 of their customers, I'm talking about a huge percentage of their customer base started taking their business elsewhere. Do you think that we would see the premiums on silver begin to go down in order to entice their customers to return? And what are your thoughts on supporting small businesses? Would you rather pay a little bit more to shop with a small business or would you rather pay a little bit less to help fund a massive corporation? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.